Brett Strong, Internet Skeptic, series title, 60 Seconds or Less, where I utterly destroy the world's top Christian apologists in 60 seconds or less. Up to bat will be Paul Copain, and his book is titled, Is God a Moral Monster? That is, is the Christian God, the Old Testament, the Christian God, is he a moral monster? I, 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 I'll leave that judgment up to you. But the stuff in the Old Testament, the orders, the Christian God tells those men back in those days to carry out is shocking. It's a good thing that the Bible is a book of fairy tales, so it's, this is not really real. But even as a fairy tale, with, 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 a, with a fairy tale God telling these people to do such shocking things. It's still shocking, even though you like this book is a book of fables, a book of tales. It's still shocking when you see how the Christian God of the Bible, the fairy tale Bible, the 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 tells of men, different men to just slaughter people like pigs. You know, he has his reasons like payback is a as they say. And the Christian God, the Old Testament God, is not one God you want to be on the bad side. You know, just look at Joshua. The Christian God tell, told Joshua to slaughter him. Slaughter him. The Christian God told Saul, slaughter these people. Just slaughter them. The Christian God told Isaiah, just stand back and watch what I'm going to do to these people. Oh, man. Woo! This is going to be crazy, Isaiah. Watch. Then he turns around and tells his own people, slaughter your own people for my sake. Wow. It's, God a moral, it's the Christian God a moral monster. You be the judge, but let, let, let me just read a few of these things out so you can see what we're talking about. Joshua 10, 28 through 40. I'm going to just skip along. Joshua and his army destroyed the city of Mecca, killing everyone in it, including the king. Not one person was left alive. Then they attacked Libna. They slaughtered everyone in the city and left no survivors. Next they went to Lachish, and the entire population was slaughtered. A few verses down, they attacked Eglon and completely destroyed the entire population. Not one person was left alive. Then they attacked Derbah and captured the city, its king, and all surrounding villages. And they killed everyone in it, leaving no survivors. And that's just a few verses. Just, just look at that. Slaughter, slaughter, slaughter these people. Slaughter them, slaughter them, slaughter them. Think about it, folks. Can you imagine how many adorable newborn babies were hacked to death. You know, think about it. There was no bullets back in those days. No bombs. It was like swords. Just, you know, you, you, you see a chicken, you chop up a chicken. That's how they did the humans. Just chopped them up. So imagine how many adorable newborn babies that Chris and God ordered to be hacked to pieces. Hacked to death. Just butchered. How many barefoot giggling children the Christian God ordered to be slaughtered, hacked to death, limb by limb. How many big bellied pregnant women, cute big belly pregnant women, just ready to burst open almost with giving child, slaughtered like pigs without regard? How many elderly, frail women and men? You ever go to a nursing home and see just elderly people? They're just helpless. They're just helpless. The Christian God said, slaughter these people like pigs. How, you know, there had to have been people severely mentally handicapped, people like with autism, Down syndrome, people that just basically didn't know right from wrong at, at, at a high level. I mean, you know, you see people with, you know, deep autism, Down syndrome, handicapped people, mentally handicapped people, people. The Christian God said, slaughter them like pigs. Down syndrome, slaughter them like pigs. Autistic people and kids, slaughter them like pigs. Handicapped, slaughter them like pigs. Wow. 
Paco Pan, I'm going to ask you, is the Christian God a moral monster? I'm going to let you guys be the judge. Let's, let, let, let's move along. Let's go to Saul. 1 Samuel 15, 2-3. Keeping with this God of moral monster. 1 Samuel 15, 2-3. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalek nation. Men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, camels, and donkeys. Now I, I could see, hey, you know what? Man on man, our army against their army, it's on. But then you read, slaughter, like pigs chop them up. Gut them, the donkeys, the camels, the sheep, the cattle. What did the animals have to do with that? So they slaughter all the animals he ordered. And as you know, he, and he said, slaughter the babies. Those cute, adorable babies slaughter them like pigs. You know those adorable babies you see in diaper commercials and the Christian God said, slaughter them like pigs, chop them up, hack them to death. Leave no survivors. Cute little giggling children. Slaughter them like pigs. Hack them to death. And of course once again. You're going to have. In a nation. Elderly people. Big belly pregnant women. You're going to have. Handicapped people. You're going to have people with Down syndrome. Autism. Christian God said, I don't care. They're elderly, frail, shivering, hungry, starving, abused, enslaved, whatever their condition, a newborn baby to a giggling child to a woman ready to, ready to burst open for pregnancy, whether it is Down syndrome, little kid, boy, child, teenager, whether they had autism, whether they're mentally handicapped at some other level, whether they're physically handicapped, whether they're old and frail, slaughter them like pigs. Chop them up. That's the Christian God. It's God a moral monster. So, so far he's told the Christian, the Christian God has told Joshua, Completely separate situation. Slaughter all these people. City after city after city after town after town after village after village. Slaughter them like pigs. Then another situation he tells Saul. The nation must go. Donkeys, camels, sheep, cattle, babies, children, the elderly. All must go. Slaughter them like pigs. Let's move along to Isaiah 13, 14 through 18. This is where the Christian God tells Isaiah, basically, watch this. It's talking about Babylon. Like Babylon's going to get the big payback. The destruction of Babylon. Let's pick it up. Isaiah 14, Isaiah 13, verse 14 through 18. This is the Lord God Almighty speaking. Everyone will run until exhausted, rushing back to their own lands like hunted deer, wandering like sheep without a shepherd. Anyone who's captured will be run through with a sword. Their little children will be dashed to death right before their eyes. Their homes will be sacked and their wives raped by attacking hordes. For I will stir up the matters against the Babylon. And no amount of silver or gold would buy them off. The attacking armies will shoot down the young people with arrows. They will have no mercy on helpless babies and will show no compassion for children. Wow. The Lord will stir them up. No mercy on babies. Show no compassion for children. This is the Christian God speaking here. Slaughter them like pigs, he says. The babies... Show them no mercy. Those cute little babies just hack them to death. The little children says, show no compassion, show no mercy, just hack them to death. 
their wives will be raped by attacking whores. He, he's like, you know what? This is part of my payback. I'm going to have their wives. The, the, the enemy of the groups of men will rape these women. These women will be gang raped. This is the Christian God. Yeah, these women, these wives, gang rape. The, you, these men, you're going to watch your wives get gang raped. Unless, uh, if you happen to be alive at that moment, you're going to watch these men attacking whores gang rape your wife. Gang rape them. The Christian gods. And that's part of the payback Babylon. Gang rape. Gang rape. So we got the children and babies that says, show no mercy on the helpless babies. Show no mercy on the helpless babies. Show no compassion for the children. The wives, just as bad. I'm going to have groups of men gang raped. They're going to be gang raped. And if their husband's alive, he's going to be watching. If the kid's alive, they're going to watch their mother get gang raped. Christian God said, I, I don't care. It's going down. That's the Christian God. It's a Christian God, a moral monster. I'll leave that up to you. To decide. Let's move along. Exodus 32, 27, 29. This is because God's own people was worshiping an idol, and, and, and you know what? And got the Christian guys, I don't care if you're my enemy or you're my own people. If, if it don't go my way, basically in these, in these areas, I'm you're paying big time. And this is what happened. The Christian God told some of the men, "Strap on your swords, go back." Well, first of all, I'm reading from Exodus 32, 27 to 29. Exodus 32, 27 to 29. The Christian God says, "Strap on your swords, go back and forth from one of the camp to the other." Killing even your brother, friends, and neighbors. And that day, 3,000 people were gruesomely slaughtered. Chris, that's a Christian God said. Get your sword. All from worshiping an idol. Get, a, get your sword. And these people who worship these idols, whether your brother, your friends, your neighbors, slaughter your neighbor, slaughter your friends, slaughter your, your own brother. This is the Christian God. Is the Christian God a moral monster? monster? Paul Copain is the Christian God. I ask you, Paul Copain, read it. Is the Christian God a moral monster? I ask the readers, the listeners, is the Christian God a moral monster? Let's look at one more. Deuteronomy 22, 20 to 21. If a woman's virginity could not be proven on her wedding night, the judges must take the girl to the door of her father's home and the men of the town must stone her to death. Can you imagine your daughter being barbarically stoned to death because she wasn't a virgin on a wedding night? If a, if a woman's virginity cannot be proven on a, wedding, on a wedding night, the judges must take the girl to the door of her father's home. Not just stone her to death, but take her to her father's door and stone her to death. Can you imagine your daughter weeping, crying, scratching the door? Daddy, mama, daddy, mama, help me, save me. While she got stoned to death. Stone after stone after stone. Her yells get softer, softer. You open the door of your daughter. A pile of broken bones and bloody flesh. All because she had sex before a wedding night. This is Brett Strong signing off. I have no more to say on this subject.